<laughs> Hi, Loomies. Let's take these out. How are you? It's nice to have you here. While I'm starting out, let me know if you can hear me okay. I want to make sure that all of that is working before we dive into having some really great conversations. If you are new to the channel, hi. My name is Jamie Butler. I'm the Everyday Medium. It is my absolute passion and drive in life to help people wake up to their natural intuitive abilities, to normalize the woo-woo. It's not woo-woo. It's true-true. And so we have real talk, real conversation here. It is also my passion to teach this information. So if you are interested in growing and learning and you want to work with someone who throws a little bit of humor in there, I don't think I'm all that funny, but I do like to laugh. And I love like to create homework, to do exercises so that you're put into the situation of having a firsthand experience with it so that you know what is real for you, helping you validate your natural intuitive abilities. So if you are interested in learning, we do have some classes coming up and they are below. <laughs> you can find those links. I'll talk about a little bit of them. We have Reiki coming up this Saturday, Reiki level one. Reiki is a word that simply means universal life force. To me, it is the Band-Aid and your first aid kit. It's a very baseline energy healing and it's meant for everyone and it's so natural, so instinctive. And I like teaching it in a way where I blend modern and traditional Reiki together. I was trained traditionally and I like to talk about being sensitive, being a psychic, being intuitive. So if that's your natural state of being, like we're going to talk about how this is going to hit some of your intuitive abilities by doing Reiki and hands-on healing. That's conversations that I like to have. And thank you, Tiffany, for the financial love. Look at you dancing over there. Thank you so much. I love you. And then I also have Compassionate Communication coming up starting February 6th. If you are looking to, let's say, hear and listen a little bit stronger, especially to the emotion behind words, rather than the words that are coming out of a person's mouth, which can be extremely triggering, come join me. You will learn things like giving compliments is actually a life alienating action. It's a judgment. Compliments are judgments, but we think compliments are wonderful. So we dose them out all the time. And I'm going to ask you, why are you giving compliments? What do you really need? So you get into what you need, what are you feeling and what kind of actions can you take to meet your needs? So we have compassionate communication coming up. Oh yeah. Kiara is sharing, I did trans channeling class and they literally oh, changed my life. I can't praise that course enough. Thank you. Yeah, the, the trans channeling class, I like teaching all of them, but this one where we get really into you know, how do you switch your, your brain waves? How do you get into an altered state of consciousness so that you can connect to spirit and allow spirit to move closer to you, if not in and through you? to communicate. If that's something that you're interested in, I will hold your hand. I will walk with you for the 16 weeks and then I will get you to that place where you can have those experiences and decide, is it something that you want to do? You know, which level do you enjoy? And then guys, this is the first time I'm saying it out loud. So if you're listening or you can't find it anywhere else, I, I used to do a mentorship, a six month mentorship and I'm putting it out there because I've had a few people who are showing interest in it. If I can get 10, at least 10, I won't take more than, I wouldn't take more than 20. I want to keep it small because I like to, I do a reading for you every month and we gather in group weekly and we take your concept of a business, like if you want to launch your own services, like if you want to be a trans channeler and offer that to others, and you want a website and you want a business out of it, or if you want to perceive and read energy and do readings for people, and you want to put that shingle out on your house and say that's what you do, this six-month mentorship is taking the concepts of the business that you want to do and making it work with your natural intuitive abilities so that you're not running some traditional business as a sensitive and oh, like burning out. It, it's a, whew, it is a burnout. I've learned so much <laughs> working as a business, having a nonprofit, having several businesses and being an energy sensitive, like 
it's too much. It has to be very uniquely designed to you. So I like to do that. And during the six months, we do the Enneagram. We um, include compassionate communication, but your guides are there the whole way. And it's just, I really enjoy it. So if you have interest in that, please email out. You can reach me at info at jamiebutlermedium.com. Let me know if you're interested. You can also go to the website. Yeah, <laughs> Colleen doesn't have this like set up, but you can go to the website and jamiebutlermedium.com and it says JBM Mentorship. Click that and you can go to the page and I have all the details laid out, all the hours. And um, what's nice is I launch you during that time. So we do live streams and if you need people to do your services with, my goodness, luminaires, don't you love when I'm like, hey, we got somebody here who needs to put hours out and we all kind of rush to them and we get our readings and our healings and our sessions and we get feedback. It's so valuable. So I appreciate you listening to that. It's the first time I put it out into the universe. If I can get 10, then I will launch it. We'll launch it in June of this year and it will go to the end of this year. This year is like awesome, 2024, all about change, my goodness. But today we're going to talk about energy healing, mm, how energy healing works, really, how it, how it affects you. <laughs> Regina, woo! <laughs> um, so energy healing, what is it? Let's talk about that first. I'm sure you have all kinds of ideas and concepts. How in the world does it work? Let's talk about that first. I kind of wish I had a little chalkboard or whiteboard over here. I could draw it out. But if you can just hang with me with a little bit of a visual, let's talk about it from external in. And we can do something as simple as deliverance of words. Delivering of words is a style of energy healing. So if you are in a structured religion, a lot of that has prayer or even a structured spiritual like mantra, repetition of mantra. All of that is words that hold intent, which together makes a recipe of energy, frequency, and vibration. So we have energy frequency, which is a vibration. And the example that I like to use is with my husband. So if I was to look at my husband, who I still think is so hot, um, yeah, he is visually, <laughs> in my opinion. I would say, hey, babe, I love you. And my I love you instantly travels. It doesn't get in a car and take five seconds to get there. It instantly arrives. So you could be thinking about somebody on the other side of the planet. It doesn't have to be in the same room for you. And say, I love you, or say words about someone, whether they are kind or not, is a judgment that you will put on it or intent that you will put on it. And that frequency will arrive to him. Now he has this beautiful, every single one of us, humans, plants, animals, even inanimate objects like your phone has an energy field. So he has this energetic field that's around him. And there are layers in this energetic field. It's kind of like he is the son of a universe, just like you. You are the son of your universe, and then you have this orbiting energy that goes around you. And each layer kind of holds a different characteristic or quality. Now, in my opinion, <laughs> and I like to get into this in the Perceiving and Reading Energy series, and in my opinion, I side a little bit with the Rupert Sheldrake. So he has this theory called the morphic theory, that energy in and of itself is intelligent, and that that intelligence can shift layers, like it'll shift the, the frequencies in your energetic field to match what you are needing and match what you are doing. I believe in it that way because I have seen so many people's aura fields, so many people across worlds, different cultures, everything of that nature. And I've noticed they're not all the same. So there are some theories out there, like Lead Beater has a theory that Every layer is the same on every person. Okay, I like that we want order and want to label everything so that we can kind of control it and it feels a little safe, but I don't think it's necessarily true because I've seen them look so different. So I side with the kind of morphic field that the energy field is gonna to change to meet what its needs are. So if I throw out, I love you to my husband, that frequency enters into his orbit, into his field, and then these layers decipher 
where is that frequency needed the most? Now, you can probably imagine emotion-wise, we tend to fall into our heart, or sometimes we fall into our navel, our sacral chakra, the orange one in the belly. A lot of good emotions down there. So let's say my husband needed it in his heart. So all of a sudden, this frequency just from words set alone come into his field, translates it, and goes, hey, gets to the closest layer, which is uh, a layer that relates to the physical body, and it's the layer that does its best to translate from subtle light energy to gross light energy, which is just a little bit more denser. So it's just a, a layer down, heavier. It gets to the heart. The heart chakra goes, oh, I'm going to make that translation. I know how to take subtle and put it into gross. And then that heart chakra, that little vortex of energy, is connected to lungs. It's connected to, oh my God, there's so many of them. It's connected to bone, ribs. It's connected to the muscles, tissues around. It's connected to an endocrine gland, which is called the thymus here. The gland is the thymus. And it that frequency of I love you is going to affect all of this. It affects the hands, some of the arms. It affects the heart. It affects a breathing rate, heart rate. And then the energy takes it and goes, okay, I'm going to feed the endocrine gland and it feeds the thymus. Now the thymus produces thymusin. It's just one of the things that it does. It does so many other things, but thymusin helps boost your immune system. So when my husband receives my frequency, hears the words, I love you, and the frequency comes into his heart and he puts a smile on his face like, oh, I, I love you too. Chemically what's happening is thymusin is being supported and his immune system is getting stronger. It's like physically does stuff. So when it hits the endocrine gland, it is now feeding a system to give a response. And this is gonna be on you because science hasn't really figured it out. <laughs> does the brain give a thought first and then the emotions respond and then the body does something or does the body do something that triggers emotions that then triggers a thought? I'm gonna give my opinion. This is my opinion. I believe that an emotion is triggered first. I think there's a lot of magic and a lot of unknowns in the emotional body. And I think there is the endocrine system then produces hormones or withhold hormones that actually like creates a chemical, a chemical balance or imbalance that can weigh in on a physical response, an emotional response, and I believe it goes emotional, physical, and then thought. And I think they're so on top of each other. They're so on top of each other, you, you can't even slice them apart. You would cut into the other one. But I have the opinion that emotions lead first. But I want you to know that when I teach my classes, I talk just like I'm talking right now. And I will let you know when it is my opinion. And I will encourage you to find your own opinion. In fact, there's often times where I will give you other people's videos and lectures and books to read so that we can have a conversation of, well, what do you think about it? You know, because it's not a known. A lot of this subtle light energy is not a known and to me, that's very exciting. So if I'm teaching you energy healing, I want you to somewhat understand what has been documented, experienced, seen, and seen, such as the energy trickling into your field, coming into your chakra, coming into your gland, the muscles, the, the ligaments, you know, the organs and everything, and then triggering a response of chemicals, a physical reaction, an emotional reaction, and then a series of thoughts, which then kicks up momentum to either start a conversation or have internal thoughts and reactions. Healing happens this way. And as I mentioned before, it can be as simple as saying a word to somebody in the same room or a word to somebody that is all the way on the other side of the planet. So Gregor is saying, is the thought and interpretation of energy? Yes, it is. It is, it is, it is. <laughs> Regina is saying that I love you sounds better than vitamin C. Not unless if it's one of those really soft, yummy, chewable ones. I'm really enjoying those these days. It's like candy, but it's not. Oh, oh I love these thoughts. Keep them coming. So yes, the thought is an interpretation of energy. So when we go into looking at energy healing, I like to teach the approach of Reiki. It is what I learned, oh my God, back in the 1990 something, 
<laughs> it's been a while. I am the seventh generation from Dr. Yusui himself. So when you study with me, or I am the sixth generation, you are the seventh generation. So when you come looking for me, that's a very short grapevine. So a lot of what I talk about is very old school. And then I like to direct you on what I am teaching that is traditional, that was word of mouth through my Japanese teachers, and what was learned through books, and what was learned from a modern approach of Reiki, and how essentially it is quantum healing. It is. So I wanted to write, you know, hey, let's talk about Reiki, but really Reiki is quantum healing. It's a version of quantum healing. So I like to talk about that because it does transcend time and space, which makes it a bit of a quantum thing. Ooh, seventh generation. <laughs> yes, Regina, seventh generation. Um, okay, now that we've talked about words, how can we intensify that? So when you get into, let's say you go see an energy healer, or maybe you're doing something remote or you're on video like we're doing now, or you come join our Learn It Lives because January 31st, we have a healing that I'm going to be doing, hosting on Learn It Live. And we're not going to be together. I'm not going to be able to see you. Sometimes I'll see your name pop up, but maybe you won't be watching it live, which you don't have to watch a live video to receive the healing. Because healing energy transcends time and space. You can actually watch the same healing video a hundred times and get a hundred different variations of healing from the one video. Isn't it amazing? The only true moment is the present moment. It's just delicious to talk about it this way. Yeah, there's the link, but you can find it in the description below. So you go for this healing. How does it intensify? Is it more than just the words a person is saying? It is. Okay, how do we want to explain this? <laughs> in the terms of Reiki, because this is what I work with the most, um, it is a universal energy that you are pretty much a straw for. You are not giving your own energy to somebody else. You are not going to be receiving your healer's energy. That's not it. And they're not necessarily a healer. They're more of a channeler. So what's happening when we talk about being a sensitive uh, being, we often talk about the quality of energy that we have within us. And there are three distinct qualities of energy. There is, on the right side of your body, positive current. This is like the sun, the strength, you know, the, the leadership energy. Then we have the left side of the energy, which is more of the moon energy. It is the healer, the one that gives change. So it's more of the, the follower or the supporter, the leader and the supporter. It's more fixed, more about fluid, the lake, the river, very distinct. And then the third quality of energy we have in the center line of our body. So if you just like cut in from your ears, come all the way down through your nipples, we get to say that, and then come down through your hips and kind of on the inside of your knees, all the way like on the other side of your big toe. All that is the center line energy, which is your neutral energy. So when you say, I want to get grounded, yay, you're pulling your energy in the center. That's neutral. So you're going to be more grounded. You're not going to be triggered to be controlling or um, aggressive. <laughs> and you're not being pulled to the left side of your energy, which is the negative current energy, which is more moon-like, more feminine. So this is more passive where you kind of give up and you let go. It's okay, it's fine, whatever. You're not gonna be triggered to do that because you're in the center. So it's like you see a lot clearer, you see bigger. And when we are using healing energy in Reiki, I was like using, is that a word? But yeah, I can kind of say. We're taking from the universe, pulling into the top side of our head, kind of like the earth has the axis. We have an axis in the middle and we're pulling the energy down and we're releasing it from our heart out the palms of the hands and out the soles of the feet. And so you become like the healer, which is not really a healer, but more of a channeler, becomes the conductor. And the more neutral you are into your body and the more that you understand the qualities of your energy, which we talk about in class, the more energy can be amplified to you, who is the receiver. So much fun. And then the receiver 
What's nice about energy is energy is intelligent in and of itself. Just like I said, with the morphic field, this is why I'm so on Rupert Sheldrick's side here. Like, uh. by the way, if you're watching this, Rupert, you can call me. We love to go out to lunch. You know, <laughs> one day it's going to happen, guys. Okay. Um, <laughs> one day. So when we get into receiving the energy, it's intelligent. So it's going to go to the places that's needing that it's needed. So if you have a priority list, like I'm coming to get healed because I have a broken finger or I have a pain in my heart or have these thoughts I don't want anymore. That's great. You can have an agenda. It's all right. You can know what you want, but Reiki is going to come in and go, Hmm, there is a deficit out here in the energetic field. We're going to fill it in first. And then we're going to come into the physical body and then we're going to work on the physical body. And so it's an overall balancing and healing. I find it really interesting that in our American culture, and I would love to hear your thoughts on this, please. In our American culture, when something occurs to us or something happens, you break your finger. This is an example I'm going to give. Obviously, I keep pointing to this finger. I did break the snot out of it. <laughs> it's got a lump on it now. That's all right. Um, like when you break your finger, we're not taught to go, oh, Breathe into it, breathe out of it. Now, when something is injured, hit, broken, bruised, it is going to take from your energy field. It's going to take that frequency and the frequency is going to move in because the body is trying to heal itself. Just like chemically inside, the body is already mending all the cells, like they're reacting in different ways. They're going to start healing. Well, that power up comes from your energy field. And if we're not taught that it comes from our energy field that we carry around us, then we could walk around with these deficits, these pockets. And this is how sometimes we start to feel like a wet rag. Um, I'm always injuring this finger. I don't know what it is. I'm always injuring my knee. I don't know. And then you go see somebody who can measure energy for you or visibly see or sense. And they go, oh, you don't have any energy around your knee. It's like... <laughs> empty. You got to fill that stuff up. What fills that stuff up? Okay. Naturally, what fills it up without you even knowing is breath work, <gasps> breathing, <sighs> coming into yourself, like closing your eyes and taking a deep breath. Oh my God. It's like blowing up a balloon in your energy and it fluffs you out. Laughter. Unknowingly, when you get into laughter fits, Stop it. Your energy is blowing up. When you have those happy skippy days, I don't know. I just feel good. Like I'm feeling lucky and I'm feeling happy. And I'm just like this. Your energy is, is blowing up. It's balancing itself. When you sit in nature, when you gaze at nature, your energy is balancing itself and it's coming back to you. So those are things that can happen without you actively seeking to balance your energy. But then you guys can go to healing sessions. You could do yoga. You can do meditation. You can pull your crystals out. You can, you know, take a long bath. Oh, my God. Those are incredible. <laughs> what are you guys talking about, left-handed or right-handed? What? Who is doing what when I'm not around? <laughs> Thank you. My birthday is coming up, but it's been a little while. <laughs> I have no idea what you guys are talking about, but I feel like it's very funny. Keep it up. Oh, love this question. I'm going to get into that, Andrew. Thank you for asking this. Okay. Um, so those are natural ways and then ways that you can come in. But if you're not taught to do those things, your body can walk around kind of with these deficits. And then with a deficit, the muscle becomes weaker. It, you become more exposed, more susceptible to having repetitive injuries. And so it's good for you to slow down and pay attention to your body. Invest your energy right where you are. Your body is an instrument. Take care of it. So when you're injured... Your body will take energy from its field to mend. Now, if you're doing or receiving Reiki, quantum healing, pranic healing, um, Jinshin Jiatsu, acupuncture, 
acupressure. Oh, there's so many guys. I just can't touch for health. They just keep coming. Um, that is going to help you fill in your deficits so that your body can naturally heal itself. You are actually the healer, not the person who is channeling the energy to you or igniting the energy, maybe like through polarity. They are not the healer. They are the assistant and you are the healer. That's what makes this so magical. So Andrew was asking a quick question. Do you have any insight about what modality of healing Jesus used? I've always wondered. Well, the story goes <laughs> that Reiki, universal energy, it was prompted by Dr. Yusui. Dr. Yusui was a dean at the Kyoto University in Japan. And some of his students came to him and they were learning the Bible. And the students were like, hey, as Jesus healed people, like, how can you teach us how that happened? It says he did this in the Bible. We would like to learn it. And Jesus even had the statement, you know, what can be done before can also be done again. And he preaches about this. And as the dean, Dr. Yusui didn't have any answers. So he was kind of bound by his tradition. He felt this wasn't right. So he actually stepped down. He resigned. And he took that time to go seek out the healing. And it's a wonderful journey if you're into research. Uh, you can look up the research online. I'll tell you where to go or what to look for. So Dr. Yusui started looking through uh, I don't know, the Chinese sutras. He went through uh, Tibetan sutras. He learned so many different languages. He learned Sanskrit. He learned um, Chinese. Just He went through everything. He went through the Buddhist. He went through Christianity. He just really couldn't find anything. And then he heard of these uh, Tibetan scrolls that were found in the desert. And they are the scrolls of St. Aisha. And so that's what I want you to put your fingertips and go research online because they are translated and you can read these and they're just a little fabulous. And so Dr. Yusui did, you know, learned Sanskrit and he went and studied the scrolls of St. Aisha. And he felt those were the scrolls of Jesus. And there are many people who have read them and believe that they are the journals or the documentation of Jesus' travels uh, through Egypt and through the desert and so forth. So it's just quite interesting. And then... Um, through that, he discovered ways to um, apply the healing or know of the healing, like know what to do, but he didn't know the application. So this is when one of his uh, friends said, uh, it's time to go hike the highest mountain and fast and meditate for 21 days because that's what you do. That's definitely not what you do here in the States. You know, when you tell somebody who is an American and born in the U.S. that you're not going to eat for a whole day so that you can get some spiritual answers, let alone 21 days on top of a mountain, <laughs> you're going to get laughed at. It's not going to happen. We are attached to our food. Anyways, so he's up on the mountain and he's meditating on the 21st day. He gets nothing. He moves the 21st rock. And uh, the way he describes it and he has it documented is that he got hit by lightning. He thought... Lightning came from the sky, a storm came and it hit him in the head. And he had all these memories of symbols and signs that came in and dove into his body in a certain pattern. And it dawned on him, that's the application. It was taking these symbols that had certain frequencies and putting them in certain locations of the body that would increase the energy in the body so that you then could do the healing. So Andrew, I think Reiki might be similar to what Jesus did in the Bible. I think there are so many approaches to healing. I wouldn't say Reiki is the only one and number one. I think that would be a very huge statement. There's so many ways to approach absolute healing. And it first begins with a belief system. So I do like to talk about that at the beginning as well. Yeah, definitely check it out. Thank you so much for asking the question. It's just fun stuff. <sighs> um. Do left-handed people's energy spin more anti-clockwise and right-handed people more clockwise? Ask Gregor. You know, I'm so into that question. Huh? I know you've been around if you're asking that question because in the world of healing, there's all these beliefs, you know, clockwise builds energy naturally in your body when your energy spins clockwise. Like if you're looking at your feet and it spins to your right, ooh, your right hand first, that's clockwise energy. And that energy 
is going to increase and build. If you're looking at your feet and the energy touches the left hand, I like, I'm dyslexic, so I really have to nail this down when I'm working on healing with people. If it hits the left hand, we're going in a counterclockwise motion. And so this energy is traditionally more passive or it's going to receive and pull in. It's going to anchor and hold. And the right spin clockwise is going to build and kind of, you know, pull out, be strong, bam, quiet, you know, like this. So, right, when we look at people who are hardwired as a dominant left hand, their dominant left hand in counterclockwise motion will often have traits of a positive current clockwise spin. And so they almost are a little flippy floppy. And I do pay attention to that when I'm with someone and I'm observing their chakra spins. You know, if they're alternating in opposite directions than a traditional set of healthy chakras, I don't mess with them. That person has done that to their own chakras and they are doing just fine, you know? And so when I teach the Reiki class and we're learning the symbols and we're learning motions of energy, I tell each person, sit with it first. And I want you to tell me what was easier for you because I think we're all individuals and we're all coming at energy in a different way. So my clockwise might feel very strong, but to my friend next door, a counterclockwise might feel very strong to them. It's great. Let it do what really works individually for us. I think when we get into trying on directions about subtle light energy and how to heal that are universal across the board. We all wear these pants and we all look fabulous in them. <laughs> God, I think we're feeding ourselves some lies. <laughs> Let's look at a way where we can talk about subtle light energy, healing and learning how to heal in a very individual way. But, you know, we still have boundaries. I think it's important to empower each person to really connect to the way that they feel comfortable using that energy. That's where we're going to get the great stuff, right? That we're not all manufactured the same. So we're, we have no competition to anyone because we're all doing it and approaching it so differently. This is the stuff I love so much. <laughs> oh my God, Britta, I just looked up and saw all your laughter little faces. Sonia says, I received all levels of Yusui Reiki attunement via distance over the phone. No certificates were given. Would it benefit me to take Jamie's classes to receive certificates? I mean, if you love certificates, you'll definitely get some if you come with me. We do it old school. I like to print them, sign them, and mail them to you. Old school. That's how I got mine, and it was so precious. I want you to have yours that way, too. So um, I think the difference is... When you were over the phone and you got your attunements, which means that the symbols that Yusui saw on top of the mountain when he was fasting for 21 days, they took them and they put them in the body to increase your energy field. It really increases the neutral line in your body. It's pretty awesome. Um, if you didn't get any education around it or maybe homework or practice with it, because that's something that I really love doing. I like to talk about it. I like to answer your questions. I like to pose certain situations and ask why. So if you want more connection to it, I think the class would be useful. But you know, if you've already had your attunements, um, I'll definitely attune you again, though it's not quite necessary. But I, I like doing that as well. The difference with my attunements, even though they are remote, I don't do them in a group. In a modern scenario, I could have 20 people in class. I do one attunement for 20 people and we're done. I like to take each person <laughs> and I dedicate my attunement to one person and then I move to the next. And you get a little schedule so you know what time your attunement's coming up. So you can stop whatever you're doing, lay down, sit down, you know, and I take notes. And I don't have to take notes. It's just, I want to connect to you. That was one of the most awkward and most beautiful things about the Reiki was when I got attuned because traditionally they're like, don't you open your eyes? It was like this, some mystery. It was really kind of weird. Um, but afterwards, like I got to look at my teacher's face and go, what the F was that? You know, what's going on? What, what happened? And we could have a conversation about it. And in some of these modern classes, it's like, oh, you're attuned, go carry on, heal the world. It's like, oh, we don't get to process this. Like we don't get to talk about this. So 
10 days after your attunement, we do a live stream and we connect. I read your notes and give you a copy of it if you want. It's just kind of handwritten what I experience so that you can like process what energetically just went down. I mean, if you're letting somebody into your energetic body, huge compliment, guys, big compliment. Don't do that lightly. <laughs> Don't do it lightly. Sam I am has been a member from Lumi Vol for 24 months. Happy two-year anniversary. Oh my gosh. Thank you for being here. Yes, Amora says it feels like the beliefs and intentions would matter the most. Absolutely. You definitely want to hook up with someone who is very centered, knows exactly where they're coming from, is not easily swayed. You know, and it's someone that you feel comfortable with in receiving that kind of energy healing. What's fun is when you study energy healing, everybody, <laughs> everybody can benefit from it. I like to provide energy healing to my plants. So here are some examples. I mentioned my finger before. When I broke it, um, I broke it with a sledgehammer <laughs> against a two by four. You feel the pain as much as you want. It was definitely there. And I was like, holy crap. So, of course, I hold it. That's natural instinct, which is a great instinct because you have light that comes out the palms of your hands. Like, watch kids when they fall down and they get a boo-boo and they put their hands on it. They're like, ow, that hurt or ow. Holding it makes a circuit. Now you're anchoring energy into the place that just got injured. It's perfect. Just like when you go into prayer position. You are taking positive current energy with negative current energy. You're connecting it and you're resting your thumbs on your center line. You're connecting all three energy currents in your body. No wonder this is such a delicious pose. This is how you get grounded. Connect the circuits. So I grab hold of it. I was like, okay, here we go. This is an opportunity. Activated my breath work. Breathe into the pain, right? Loosening my muscles. So it requires you to understand not to tense anything up when you are going through something very serious. When you tense things up, you're choking out the flow of energy. It's like tightening the faucet. No water is coming through. You want to keep the faucet open, even if it's painful to you because you just had an injury. And then I pushed Reiki in there and it just pulled out the pain sensations. The nerves stopped thumping. I stopped crying. <laughs> it was just like those tears that run down your face no matter what is like happening. I stopped crying. And then I actually played around and I used some of Dr. Sue Mortar's energy codes, which I am now a facilitator. So I'm going to bring some of those classes forward this year and did some breathing exercises on it. And it lifted the pain just the same, just gone. And it was so wonderful that it took all my pain away, but my finger wasn't working right. <laughs> and then I accidentally hit it again, kind of like broke it all over again. It took so long to heal, but the pain, it was like such a great opportunity to remove the pain. Another thing is over Thanksgiving, I got, I think it was RSV, a very bad lung infection, turned into throat nose, sinus, ear infection. The ear infection was nasty. It was like I was six and I had one of those like oozing ears. But anyways, so I went to the doctor and the doctor looked in my ear. I was like, yeah, I can't hear well. <laughs> she goes, okay, I'll look in there. She looked in there and she was like, you have blood like in your ear. It's not in the canal. It is in your ear. Like your eardrum is full of pus and blood on the inside from the infection in your sinus. She was like, my God, how much pain are you in? I was like, oh, I, I don't have any pain. She looks back in my ear. She was, oh my God, it's a mess. <laughs> Doctors aren't supposed to behave this way, but she was like, oh my God, it's a mess. God, you must be in so much pain. I go again, I I'm not in any pain. She looks in my other ear. She's like, mm hmm. And she sits down with a pen. She goes, So tell me, how much pain are you in? And I was like, I, well, I don't, why are you asking me again? I'm not in any pain. I'm not in any pain because I've been doing Reiki. 
and didn't dawn on me. Oh, Reiki, Reiki, Reiki to heal it, healed all the pain and everything, but still the blood and everything was in the ear and it looked horrible and I couldn't hear. I couldn't hear anything from it. So she was quick to say, oh my God, you, you have to take this medicine. You have to do this. And I was like, okay, I'm down for that because Reiki works with any religious belief system. Reiki works with any medicine that you're going to take. Like it plays so well with everyone. It's like the favorite friend at the party knows everyone. So with the Reiki and the medicine, the blood and pus dried up. Is, is this what you signed up for to talk about today? <laughs> Cleared up and um, absolutely wonderful. So I thought it was funny. The Reiki took care of all the pain, but I needed more treatments to get past the, the swelling, the inflammation and the infection itself. But sometimes as a human, it's not moving as fast. And so I partnered with medicine and took care of it. But there's also times that like my friend broke, um, well, my brother broke his collarbone. My friend <laughs> broke the arm and I immediately started to heal it. And when we got to the hospital, the doctor was like, why didn't you come in right away? This arm has been broken because we got an x-ray. And I was like, we came in right away. And he's like, no, this bone has already started to heal. I was like, oh my God, they had to re-break the bone and set it and put it in a cast. I felt so terrible. So I will talk about in Reiki when to not immediately heal. Make sure your bones are set before you heal a bone. <laughs> Make sure everything is in the right place because it will start to heal. Okay, I'm reading some comments. You guys have just been busting it out. I love it. <laughs> Regina, it's so cool to get attuned. Oh, Kiara says, I love my attunement. Diane sharing, when I got my first attunement 30 years ago, yeah, I immediately became a non-smoker. It was the greatest gift, right? Oh my God, there's so much that comes with it. I usually don't talk about the side effects of the attunement until after the class is over and you can't back out because some really fabulous stuff happens and it can be terrifying for people. I stopped watching TV. I stopped like I used to always have the TV on. I was a big component of chocolate. I stopped eating chocolate. It's really, really crazy. Um, I had so many other habitual changes that came from it. Tiffany says, I highly, oh, thank you. I highly recommend Jamie's classes. I've learned so much. She gives you great books to read as well. I literally ordered all of them. You did? I can't wait. I hope, you know, we're going to be going to Mount Shasta, hopefully in August of this year. And we're going to hopefully put down the money that's required uh, to book said place in Mount Shasta. So if you guys are wanting to join an in-person, I'd love to see you. We have like 20 slots and we're going to do a lot of outdoors uh, events, watching the sky, more multi-dimensional aspect and maybe even some um, forest bathing with a Sasquatch or two. <laughs> Amora is sharing, I wish doctors had built in intuition and Reiki. I've been feeling something isn't right with a crowned upper left tooth since the crown was initially done. Dentist says he sees nothing. Amora, I had to go back to the same doctor because I didn't feel like my lungs were right. I still can't catch a full breath. And I got sick before Thanksgiving. This is pretty intense stuff. So I do my breathing exercises every day. I go to sleep like this with Reiki and I'm still having a hard time. Like I can't imagine somebody with a low immune system and, you know, not like anyways. So I went to the doctor and he came in. I saw the nurse before. The nurse is the one who was like, whoa, what a mess. And I came in. He goes, so what do you do? I said, I'm a medium. And he leans back and I was like, oh, here we go. And he goes, that's great. What do your spirits say about your lungs? And I looked at him like doe eyed. I almost like, it was like a little teary. I was like, oh, they say this and that and that and that and this and that and that and that. And, that. and he sat and listened and he goes, okay, all right, well, let's get an EKG on you. Make sure your heart is working right because this could be an effect of your heart. And then we'll look at how to move forward. And I was like, oh, okay. I was like, this is so wonderful. He didn't even bat an eye. I was almost like, I, I want you to be my doctor. But it was like an urgent clinic. Incredible. 
oh, Tiffany is coming to Mount Shasta. Yes, and she's bringing her laser green guns. Yay. Oh, Moni, when can you sign up? Oh, my God, Moni, I would love to see you guys all there. Um, well, as soon as we secure the place, it'll just take me a few days to put it up on the website. It's roughly going to be around the 2000 mark, a little bit higher, uh, a little bit lower, but that's the average cost because there are some more private rooms than others. So, and there's like uh, public or like living room sleeping quarters. So those are going to be you know, like discounted. So um, I'll get all of that lined up. So you can just start thinking about that. And we would be happy to do payment programs if that's what people need. If you just want to put a little money aside every month, you know, we'll hold on to that and, and help you with that budget. <laughs> Amora says, I tell my doctors everything Grace <laughs> and Maitland say. I love that. I do it. But yeah, time for... Oh, time for bed for you. Much love, Kiara. Thank you so much for staying awake. So energy healing. Let's get back to the topic and uh, we can close this up. I so appreciate you guys being here with me. Um, energy healing. It is absolutely a real thing. And it does require a certain level of an open belief system, though you don't have to believe in the actual healing for it to occur. Um, so there are ways to work with it. If you find you're coming into this world and you want to believe in the energy healing, I will say it's not like taking a pill. The pills are very aggressive and strong. They're chemical reactions that are happening inside of the body. And a lot of times they're doing equal amount of damage as they are healing and supporting. Sometimes, not all the time. It's a blanket statement, guys. So when we look at energy healing, it will often require repetition. So if you're coming into this world and you want to have an experience, find a healer or find a video or find something online. We have a lot of healings over on Learn It Live and some of them are totally free. So go over there and hit up the free ones just to get a taste of it, what a remote healing is like. Repeat, 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 because we have this really cool belief system that what happened to you on this day is great for this day. And then you go to sleep and you wake up and it's a brand new day and I'm not the same. Right? I'm a different person here and I've left that behind. So it's a crazy belief system that will shut down and turn off some frequencies in your body so that it fulfills the belief system that I am a new person this day. So if you do an energy healing every day, let's say for a week, then you start to see what the differences really are. You're like, oh my God, I'm changing. This is new. I haven't had this before. So you get the validation out of it. And then when you get the validation out of it, then you can go to every other day, maybe go to every three days, play around with it. How long does it take for you to let go of that healing or to allow that healing to come in and completely change you? I've had people come in that were walking with a cane and that left not walking with a cane. One session. And they were upset that they were not walking with a cane. <laughs> <laughs> they were upset with me. <laughs> it's just wild. So, oh, yay. Oh, I love that you guys are breaking it down and talking about Mount Shasta. <laughs> we'll let you know as soon as it's up. And keep in the back of your head. It's also African Safari, November 2025. And I hope to have all of that information up as well because I will definitely start taking payments for that. That's going to be somewhere between like ten dollars and $12,000. That is a big thing. It is a big trip. It is a long trip. It is hot air balloon over the Serengeti kind of an experience. It is top notch. So if that's been on your bucket list, just start pulling a little bit now. You know, we've got more than a year and a half to get there. Okay. <laughs> I'll stop talking. I hope to see you guys soon. Maybe that's January 31st for a little healing session over on Learn It Live, or it's this Saturday if you want to discover what Reiki Level 1 is all about. I'd love to see you. Take care, everyone, and have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye. <laughs>